of the tip of this rod as representing the center of the diagonal mirror. It should fall on the optical axis of the primary mirror. This second rod runs down both the mechanical and optical axis of the focuser. When the focuser is properly squared on to the tube, the optical axis of the primary and the optical axis of the focuser should intersect. Here's an illustration of what an error in the squaring on of the focuser would look like. By shimming the focuser, you can make these two axes coincide. Squaring on the focuser usually doesn't take a very large amount of adjustment. In fact, small shims made out of cardboard are all that are usually needed for this style of focuser. The screws have been loosened. We slide in the cardboard, tighten up the screws, and see if that's the amount of adjustment you need. When you're finished, just cut off the cardboard with a razor blade, and you're finished. Don't give up now. We're almost done. We've reached the point where we're ready to align the primary mirror. Here's a typical example of the installation. This is an example of one kind of mirror cell. In this arrangement, a threaded rod passes through the back plate and has a wing nut. As you turn the wing nut, you pull the screw down, and pulling the screw down causes the mirror to tilt. If your mirror cell has only three screws protruding at the rear, it's probably a design like this, and it's safe to adjust collimation by simply turning your screws in the back. To collimate your primary mirror, you'll use one of two tools, either an inexpensive homemade peep sight or an either a homemade or commercially available Cheshire collimation tool, sometimes called a, a Cheshire eyepiece. The main purpose of these tools is to force your eye to be centered at the center of your focuser. You can make your own peep sight alignment tool. In fact, they sell them in photography stores disguised as 35 millimeter canisters. Just take it and throw away what's inside, cut off, <laughs> cut off the bottom of the can, and then drill a small, maybe eighth inch hole right where the uh, casting dimple is in the top. When you're done, your peep side alignment tool should look like this. You've got a 1 8 inch hole in the top, the bottom is cut out, and you can see clear through it. It's probably a good idea to actually make two, one out of a somewhat clear plastic. This will allow the light to pass through and illuminate the inside of the peep sight tool. This is helpful during alignment. First, we'll show you how to do the primary mirror alignment using the clear peep sight tool. Now we're looking down through the peep sight. We can easily see the spider veins and the secondary holder. Also now in the center is a black dot, which is generated by the hole in the peep sight tool. We're actually using a rather large dot here. The one you have should be a little smaller. As we change the focus, you can also find the spot on the primary mirror. In this case, our spot is actually the five-pointed star. And you'll see how that helps collimation in just a moment. Now we're going to adjust the screws on the back of the primary mirror cell to overlap the star and the hole in the peep sight. There we go. This is really difficult if you have a circular spot on your primary mirror, because it's a little difficult to tell where the edges of the circles are. But with the five-pointed star, it's easy to see just where the edges lie. It's important to do, if you're using a peep sight, use a clear 35 millimeter canister and illuminate the outside of the canister with some ambient light or a, or a flashlight.
Now we'll use the Cheshire alignment tool to adjust the primary mirror. One of the advantages of the Cheshire tool is with the cutout in the top, you can shine a light through and even do this adjustment in the dark. Now we're looking down through the Cheshire eyepiece. What you can see is the spider veins and the secondary holder. And the black dot in the center is the black dot generated by the Cheshire eyepiece. That's where your eye would normally be located. As we change the focus now, we can look beyond and see the star that's located on the primary mirror. What we need to do is overlap the star with the black dot from the Cheshire eyepiece. We're going to be adjusting on the mirror cell that has the springs and the screws. It's really quite easy to adjust this kind of mirror cell. If that axis doesn't work, just change axes. Bring it over till we're close. Switch to another axis. Getting close now. There we are. The advantage of having the star is that the little points extend out beyond the circle. If you used a round dot on the primary mirror, it's very difficult to truly center it up. That's all there is to adjusting the primary mirror. You may have heard about laser collimation tools and wonder how well they work. The unit we evaluated consisted of a laser pointer installed in a machined aluminum adapter that fit into a one and a quarter inch focuser. We found that the optical axis deviated from the mechanical axis by a tenth of a degree. This tool is most useful on a truss tube or open tube design telescope and is limited in its capabilities on a closed tube scope. In a closed tube scope, you cannot see the beam on the diagonal and hence cannot use the laser collimator to position the secondary. Considering the cost, our opinion is that your money is better spent buying a good sight tube and a Cheshire alignment tool. The basic principles of collimation apply to all Newtonian telescopes, regardless of their design. Take, for example, this Celestron SPC6. It's a bit unique in that the diagonal is attached to the focuser by a single spider vein. This whole assembly travels along the outside of the tube to focus. These three screws allow tilt and rotation adjustment. The owner has replaced the original screws with socket head cap screws. Just like before, you must loosen one bolt before tightening the others. Loosening all three bolts allows rotation. The mirror cell on the SPC6 is a little different too. In contrast with the mirror cell that we showed earlier, you now have six screws that take part in the adjustment process as compared to the three we had. In order to adjust the primary, you'll have to work on one pair at a time. The socket head cap screws pull and the set screws push. With the mirror removed from the telescope tube, we can see how the six screws do their job. The socket head cap screws pull against into a threaded hole in the tube. The set screws push against a flange. The owner has placed some weak springs over the socket head cap screws in order to provide a little residual push even when the screws are loose. Coulter revolutionized amateur astronomy back in the 80s by being one of the first to offer large aperture Dobsonians at low cost. To do this, however, it was necessary to simplify the diagonal holder and the mirror mount. The diagonal is permanently glued to a plate that is bolted to a crossbar. Fortunately, the diagonal alignment on most of the Coulters we've seen is pretty close. 
If a change is needed, you will have to enlarge the crossbar mounting holes to optimize the axial, rotational, and the tilt adjustments. The primary mirror on the Coulter telescope is adjusted by six screws in a push-pull arrangement. The inner three screws pull, and the outer three screws, which usually stand a little ways above the surface, push. Let's take a look inside and see how these operate. To remove the primary mirror cell from the telescope tube, use a Binford 2000 cordless screwdriver to remove the three screws coming in from the outside of the tube. The Coulter mirror assembly sits on three pads of rubber on top of another piece of wood. This assembly is then duct taped together and a hose clamp is put around that for security. Let's take a look at this in detail. What you'll find inside is three threaded inserts. The pull screws thread into these inserts. The push screws simply bear on the particle board outside here. What we found is that the surfaces where the push screws had been bearing actually have been distorted and are sort of falling apart, making collimation unreliable. What we decided to do was to take some thin metal pieces, cut them to size, and place them where the push screws bear. This should improve the reliability of the collimation. We epoxied these in place. Now that we've completed this minor tune-up, we'll put it back together and collimation should be a breeze. We've already adjusted the diagonal per our previous steps, and the primary mirror is back in, so the last thing is to collimate the primary using the Cheshire eyepiece. This is best done with two people, so Al, can you give me a hand? Oh, sure, it'll give me a chance to uh, get from behind the camera and do something useful. We're going to be using basically three commands to make this easier. I'll lose these headphones. I'll either say continue if it's moving in the correct direction, reverse if I want him to reverse, or another axis to mean move to a different screw and try using that one. Let's see how it works. Oh, okay, you got six screws down here, Rich. Which one should I uh, do first? Well, the outer screws are the pushers. Okay. So you probably want to release the pulling screws All and right. we'll do our adjustment by pushing on the mirror. Yeah. Of course, when we're done, we have to be sure that all of them are snug. Okay, okay. Well, let's try this one on top first. Okay. Reverse. That was the wrong direction. There okay. you go. That looks good. Yeah. Continue. Okay, it's gotten slack, so I'm going to have to push on one of the other two. Okay. Real close, just a little bit now. Okay, stop. Another mm -hmm. axis. Okay. Reverse. Stop. Looks great. That's great. Now you'll need to snug them up and be sure that they're all six fairly tight. Okay. And we'll check to see if it drifts. Okay, so I'll just sort of snug up the, uh, the pull screws one at a time, and that might pull it off. Well, let me... Uh snug up the push screws now, just a little bit each one. 
Okay, that one, you need to reverse the adjustment. Okay, so I need to loosen the push and tighten the pull. Okay. As you can see, working with a push-pull mirror cell can be a bit of a chore. You'll have to play with them, find out the characteristics of your particular cell until you lock it in nice and true. This looks great now. Good job. Okay, very good. Well, in the process of making this video, we've taken a lot of scopes apart, and we've put a lot back together, correctly, we hope. Nonetheless, it's our hope that you'll be able to go home tonight, and with a tool as simple as a homemade peep sight, you'll be able to collimate your telescope and improve its performance. This is the minimum you'd require to collimate your telescope, and there's no question that using commercial tools can really aid the process and make it easier and more correct. We recommend three tools that are made by Tektron. In fact, I carry the Tektron Cheshire eyepiece in my eyepiece case and use this every time I observe. They also sell a sight tube, and I use this at home for the initial collimation. The third item that they have is a auto collimator. I haven't used this very much. Uh, but it does have its place in collimation. Perhaps one of the things that really got me started doing collimation is the book that comes with these tools, which you can buy separately, called Perspectives on Collimation. This covers the collimation process and the use of their tools. There's an excellent review in Sky and Telescope, both on how to do collimation of the Newtonian telescope and also on the three collimating tools.